Good morning, everybody. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? How many can raise a hand and say, I love the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, mind, and strength. I love the Lord. We love you, Lord. Come on, say it.
lift your voice. Come on and praise the Lord. Oh, we praise you, Father. We're going to teach you a new song this morning. Go ahead and sing it as you learn. says we are. Amen. Thank you, Thank you, Father. You're so wonderful. We give you praise. Let's sing words.
Don't be silent. and lift your voice and praise the Lord. Holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, who was and is, is to come. Sing word.
raise your hands. Let's worship the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who is in this house. Glory. We worship you in this place. We glorify you. We magnify your holy name. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, you are so worthy. Such a worthy, loving God. Glory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's so good, isn't he? As we're worshiping the Lord, I kept feeling like there was somebody that was hurting. And you're hindered in the way you worship because you're hurting. And there's pain in your life. I didn't, I don't know if it's physical or emotional or what it is. But we love you. We want to hook faith with you. We don't want to embarrass you. But we just want to pray with you. So if you're hurting today, would you just slip your hand up, raise your hand so we can hook faith with you? Praise the Lord. Just hold your hand up. If, you, if you're believing for healing in your body, raise your hand. If you're hurting emotionally, physically, financially, whatever it is, just raise your hand for a moment. Family, if you look around and you see somebody with a raised hand, just reach over. Put your hand on their shoulder. Don't bother them other than that. And we just want to pray and hook faith with you. Because He is worthy and able. Dear Lord, we come to You right now boldly, unashamed, knowing You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Knowing You are our healer, our deliverer, the one who lifts up our, our soul, lifter of our head, Lord. We come to You right now and we say, heal them, deliver them. Whatever the burden is, the anointing destroys that yoke that binds renders it harmless, never to be used again. We bind that up in Jesus' name. Pain, discomfort, we curse you and say, loose, be free. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power, for your delivering, for the mind, Lord, put peace in there. Set peace, your peace upon them, that their mind would be at ease right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. We believe we receive it. Thank you, Lord. If you believe you receive that, just raise your hands. We're going to sing, Worthy, Worthy. Aren't you thankful that he sits on that throne, ever making intercession for us? Amen. Glory to God. Turn around, smile at somebody, shake their hand, give them a hug, and you may be seated. to start the service. 
healed and set free, loved by the Most High. Welcome this morning. We're so glad you all are here. Do we have any first-time visitors with us here this morning at Faith Life Church? Oh, please stand. Welcome. Welcome this morning. Oh, we're so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome to you all. Welcome this morning. Well, the ushers have handed you a packet, and uh, you can take just a minute and look through there. Um, It tells a little bit what goes on around here. Um, But after the service, we'd like to meet and greet you properly. And we have a lovely visitor welcome team out there in the foyer after the service. And uh, they want to hear all about you, maybe give you a hug. And if you like hugs, you know, they'll they'll shake your hand if you'd rather. So, But do that after the service. Go tell them all about you and how you got here. So we're very glad you're here today. And then I have a couple of announcements this morning. Um, We have healing classes around here. They're on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And they are next door in our activity center. Good things are going on in healing classes. It's a good place to go. It's good to have people go get their faith built up and, and get healed so they can feel good while they're serving. That's a good thing. And then we've got uh, Resurrection Sunday is April the 8th, and it will be one service only at 9 a.m. And uh, also, we are going to link both churches, our sister church, with us, and the Branson children will be doing the Resurrection skit. And then uh, both churches also will be simultaneously receiving communion that day. So um, please welcome your family and friends with you. It's a good time to be together. It'll be a special day. And then um, Celebration Sunday is May 20th, another special day, our 10-year anniversary. So we're going we're gonna to cel- celebrate. I was trying to think of something, put on the hog or wh- whatever you say, how you do that. I'm, it, dog, there you go. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Fight your friends and family to that too. It's going to be fun. Be fun. So anyway, I have some good testimonies. Um, this comes from the UK. It says, I've been listening to the power of the tongue. That cigarette illustration really hit home. I, if you've not heard it, it's re- it is really good. It says, I've pro- I probably for six or seven years have said, I can't read my Bible. Well, I'm beginning to say, I love my Bible, which I do, even one line at a time. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and then this one from the UK also says, since finding your site on the internet, internet and listening to brother Moore teach my faith life has gone through the roof thank you for making your ministry available to me here in england Isn't that good we're all a part of that that's, that's fun and then this man um has a, a ministry um he's an evangelist and i got to talk to him one day he's very fun to talk to and uh, he had sewed into the hangar project at sarasota and he now has a brand new ministry airplane so praise the lord And then this one is so cute. If you're believing for a vacation, this will encourage you. We were heading to Disney, um, and I was, uh, we were able to leave town two days uh, earlier than planned. We had just sewn $100 into the Sarasota project, and on my last day of work, I won a $25 gift card, and I thought, well, increase has begun. Well, and as I arrived home, there was a car blocking my drive, so I had to pull in the yard. Uh, This person was giving my wife a $500 check for our trip. And when they got to Florida, the hotel was oversold, so they sent them to their sister hotel, which was $400 a night. But they honored their price of $79 a night at this nicer hotel. Well, (laughs) it said we pulled up to a castle. Very fancy, huge place. I said, I took my note in with me that said, you know, talked about their $79 a night. Well, we were looking for candid camera. The Clampets had just arrived in Beverly Hills, it seemed. <laughs> so, and then they went down to the ice cream parlor to get their kids something, and they were out of the kid's size, so they gave them the normal size for the kid price. Well, everywhere they turned, there was blessing and increase. And he said, I teach a lot about the ravens delivering your blessing at the place you're supposed to be at. Well, we couldn't find our car out in the huge parking lot. There was hundreds of vehicles the next morning. Well, I saw a raven, a crow, sitting on top of a vehicle out in the middle of all these cars. Well, I took a closer look, and it was sitting on our car. So we found it quickly, and also there's a $16 charge a day to park there at the hotel, but they got it for free. And they were just thanking God for his provision, and they were getting to go to Sarasota for a Friday night service, so they were looking forward to that too. So let's stand up and thank the Lord this morning. 
Father, you are so, so good to us, Lord. Your word is going out and helping so many people, Lord. We are so thankful for that, Lord. To be a part is so, it's humbling. And Father, we just honor you today and thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for provision and ministry planes and ministry going out everywhere, Father, and helping people with their vacations and blessing them, Lord. We are we rejoice with these that rejoice, Father. It is because of you. We love you. We give you all the glory and all the praise today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. He's good, isn't he? Takes care of your vacation. Gives your ministry an airplane. God's so good. It's awesome, isn't he? He's doing it for you, right? Say this after me. What he's done for others, he's doing for me. And greater things than these shall we see. All the glory. All the glory. All the glory be to our great God. Amen. You may be seated. It's offering time. Glory to God. We like offering. It's our opportunity, another one, to worship the Lord, right? Our tithes and our offerings, our giving. Well, I want to start you out in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 6 in the King James. Very familiar. We're going to take you to a couple other translations. But it says, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Seven. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. That's our God, right? He doesn't want you to give grudgingly or of a necessity. He wants you to love him and give. Have you ever, uh, <laughs> have you ever been somewhere and you needed something and somebody said, well, here, just take this. You really wish they'd just take it back. Because I really don't need it that bad. I want, you know, I, I enjoy help. I'm a receiver. I'm learning to be better at it. But that's not the way I want it. And God doesn't want it that way either. He loves a cheerful giver. We're going to look at verse 10 of that uh, chapter in the New Living. 10 and 11. It says, For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources. Glory to God. And then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Verse 11. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. He's going to make us to where we're, we've got so much, it's easy to be generous. And then every time we're generous, God's going to get glory for it. Amen? Let's look at that in the living, in verse 11. There we go. Yes, God will give you much so that you can give away much. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will break out into thanksgiving and praise to your God for your help. Verse 12. So two good things happen as a result of your gifts. Those in need are helped and they overflow with thanks to God. Praise the Lord. That's what we give for. We want God to be glorified. We want to be happy and cheerful. And then uh, let's look at the message in verse 8. I'm sorry, verse 9. I just really like this because this is the way we give around here. Everybody's givers. It says, as one of the psalmists puts it, he throws caution to the wind, giving to the needy in reckless abandon. His right living, right giving ways never run out and they never wear out. Praise the Lord. That's us, isn't it? Glory to God. Well, you ready for a good report? We always have one. 
are paid in full in Sarasota. For those of you who aren't aware of this, we are, have a sister church that's going or are almost gone down there now. <laughs> They're about done with their service. And... Uh, they're up and running and going good. This just paid for the project. It's the build out and the to where the services are going and the, the property, everything the seats are bolted to. There's 2,500 seats in it. At $2,000 a seat, the whole project, land and all, will be paid for. As of last week, we had 1,771 seats paid for. And then last week in the church services, we had another four seats paid for. And then through the mail, another five seats paid for. And then through the Internet, another two seats paid for. So 11 more seats. Glory to God. He is faithful. Just keeps coming in. And then uh, the Sarasota General Fund takes care of plane tickets and Robin Dan's tool fund and uh, all of the good important stuff. And uh, there was a little over $3,000 sewn into that this week. So, glory to God, shopping. See, <laughs> Dave shaking his head. <laughs> the word supply, well supplied. A lot of word going out, a lot of testimonies coming in from all over the world. I had uh, my globe, I've got one sitting on my desk. I had it out this morning and was looking at it. trying Because you hear the testimonies of all of these countries and places, and it's so awesome. You can spin your globe around, and almost anywhere you put your finger, we've had testimonies of the word going there. So it is absolutely awesome. Praise the Lord. Ushers, if you'd stand and wait on the people. If you're uh, giving today... By cash or credit card, you'll require an envelope for your giving. If you're giving by check, you don't require an envelope. Make your checks, everybody in this building, make your checks to Faith Life Church of Branson. That way nobody's confused. My wife and Karen and all of those people are really happy. Makes their job easier. But then you can designate on your memo or on the envelope where you want that to go. If you want it to go to the paid in full or to the word supply or to the general at Sarasota, you just designate it. Whatever you designate, 100% will go to that. If you don't designate, that's great. It'll go to the general fund here at this church. So the lights and the air conditioning and the air conditioning and the air conditioning work really well. Amen. Glory to God. Looks like everybody's about together. If you would, go ahead and stand with me when you're ready. We're not trying to rush you. Take your time. You need help spelling millions and billions and thousands. You just let us know and Usher will be right there. We got lots of help. If you have your offering ready, go ahead and just raise it. We're going to worship the Lord with our giving. So pray this after me. Dear Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. Because of you, we never run out. We never come short. We always have and have an abundance for every good work. Plenty to give wherever you deem fit. Thank you for increasing us. Us and our children, blessing us big, making us a big blessing to many, many people, to your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. What's going on in our family, Faith Life? We're getting our buildings, our lands, and our houses. How many of you believe in for more houses? You might as well be. You're saying it. It's going to come to pass. Praise the Lord. Number two, all of our debts are being reduced and eliminated. I like those kind. Going away, getting smaller every day. Number three, God is bringing into our hands seed, even some great big whopper chunk seeds. Glory, glory, glory. Good stuff. He's faithful, isn't he? Well, ushers, wait on the people. Thank you.
<laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I was laughing because every time I get up, my wife picks something off of me. Thinking, man, you can, you can dress up pig pen, but by the time he gets there, he's going to have much. <laughs> That's what my mom always said. She said, you may be a Peanuts character, but it may be pig pen. I dress you up and get you ready for church, send you outside, and you're dirty before you ever get in the car. <laughs> Glory to God. How is everyone today? God is so good to us, isn't he? You know, I think one day we're all going to be in heaven and he's going to rewind our life and we're going to see just how good he was. You know, a lot of times you say, I missed it there, I missed it. No, he's not going to show you how you missed it. He's going to show you how good he was when you missed it. And because he's not there to condemn you, he's just there to show you just how good he is. He likes you to know he's a good God. Amen. We serve a good one. Amen. Well, if you don't, good news, you're in the right place because I'm going to tell you about how good he is today. I'm not going to say one thing about God being bad at all. You know why? Because he's not. Ever, 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 if something bad happened, who, who, who did it? The devil or me? <laughs> More than likely me because he's only one devil. And if, he, if he's bothering you, he can't be bothering me. <laughs> right? <laughs> How many know that we're people? How many people are in here today? Yeah, I got a lot of people in here. Yeah, guess what? You've messed up before. Ooh, burst somebody's bubble, didn't I? Yeah, I have to. I have to. Glory to God. But we're learning how to do good all the time, eh? Ain't we? Yeah. Aren't we? Aren't. I think ain't sounds better than aren't, don't you? Aren't. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, agree with me in prayer. Let's, uh, let's let God have this service. Amen. He's good at it. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory today for just giving us an opportunity to participate in your goodness, Lord. We ask for your help in this service, that the things said would be of you and through you, Lord, that your love would be shown, that your grace would be shown, and that your mercy would be revealed, Lord. We ask that your word go forth in, into our hearts and change our lives so that we make a difference in this world, and we'll give you the glory for it in, van, in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. How many want to make a difference in the world? You know, I don't, I don't want to be the guy that got the one talent and went and hit it in the ground. You know, it'd be like God saying, I'm going to give you all new cars. And this one guy took his new car out, and he went out and got more new cars and, and won people to the Lord and did all kinds of good things. And the last guy did nothing. That's why he's going to get his car. Because the last guy, he didn't do anything with it. God's going give, to give it to people who are doing something in this earth. He's going to give the goodness to the people that are going to distribute it, right? How many people want to be a distributor of God's goodness in this earth? Well, Jesus came and preached messages on how to do it, and we want to look today at his messages, amen? You reckon there's somebody better to, to steal a message from than Jesus Christ? Well, that's who we're going to look at anyway. Let's, turn our, let's open our Bibles to Matthew 7. We'll start in verse 24. Everybody ready to sing? Huh? Where'd the wise man build his house? Upon the rock. Wise man built his house upon the rock. Everybody knows the song? Wise man built his house upon the rock. How many people went to Bible school in here? Huh? Sunday school at the very least. Wise man built his house upon the rock. And the house on the rock stood firm. What did the foolish man do? Built his house on the sand. Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, whoever hears my word and does it. A lot of people say, Oh, I'm doing the word. I do it. I do the word. You know, we talked about Friday night, the uh, rich young ruler. What did he say? I do it. Jesus said, You know the commandments. Don't commit adultery. Honor your father and mother. You know, he, he listed off a whole bunch of them. The rich young ruler said, Yeah, I do all those. And then, God told, then Jesus told him what he really needed to do. He couldn't do that because what we, sometimes what we think is doing the Word and what God thinks is doing the Word is, wrong, is different. God's right, right? God's right. It's not just doing what it says. 
It's how you do. It's the heart that we do it with. The wise man is who hears his sayings and does them. That's building your house on a sure foundation. That's trusting in the Lord. That's believing in his word. That Jesus spent two chapters. You know, I told him earlier today, two chapters ahead of this, chapter 5 and chapter 6, preaching the message. This is the ending verses. This is where he says, and I'm going to close with this. This is Jesus preaching, and he's saying, and I'm going to close with this. Right? This is the closing verses that he's about to close with. He's at, he's at the end of his message. That Who knows how long he preached? I'd have liked to have been there, huh? How many think Jesus could preach? Yeah. Amen. And he preached the kingdom of God and the good news. Man, Jesus, he had to have them fired up. They followed him for miles and didn't eat. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. We're going to get to hear him preach someday, aren't we? We'll all be in heaven. We'll get to sit down on that grass and listen to him. Thank you, Lord. But he could preach. And he preached the kingdom of God. And, then, and at the end of this, he said, if you'll take everything I've just said. And he didn't have chapter and verse. He said, from the time I said blessed till the time I said amen. If you'll take all these things that I say and do them with all your heart. That's how you do things for God. You don't do things without heart for God. Right? The Pharisees were doing all kinds of things that were in the law, right? In, the, in what their day would be called Bible. They were doing it, and they were getting no credit for it. Right? Why? Because they were doing it legally. We don't want to do things legally. We don't want to be caught doing things out of legalistic r- rituals, tradition, if you will. Because it holds the word of God or Jesus sayings powerless. Right? When we begin to do things because we have to, anytime you do anytime you say this, say, I have to go to church, immediately catch yourself and say, No, I get to go to church. People that have to go to church are going for the wrong reason. You say, Well, you should go to church every time the doors are open. I haven't seen that scripture. It does say you should go to church all the time. But the doors are open here a lot and I really don't think everybody should be here all the time because there's sometimes there's just not that much going on. <laughs> it's true. You know, there's at least one door open Monday through Thursday, right? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> A wise man builds his life, not just his, not just what he does, but his life on what Jesus says. And it's not just what Jesus says, it's not just what Jesus does, it's what Jesus says to do. I I was talking to Kim between services, and when I was in the business world, I believed for prosperity, and I believe in prosperity. The, The body of Christ needs to hear the message of prosperity. God wants us well taken care of beyond our imagination so that we can help others. And so that we can get this gospel preached across the world. And yes, so you can, have, you can be well taken care of. No reason for you to drive around in the worst car or the least clothes or anything else. You should have the best. You're a child of the king. How many people you reckon walk into the palace and the king and everybody's dressed up real nice and you look at their kids and they're all raggedy? No, the king's kids are wearing the good stuff. And that should be. And I believed in prosperity. I, I believed God wanted me to prosper, man. I, I spent my every day in my bankrupt business listening to Brother Copeland and Brother Savelle and Brother Moore and, and all these tapes on prosperity and, and building myself up just so I could make it through another day. Glory to God. And I believe it, and I still believe in it, and I believe in the message of faith, and I believe in all that I, that I got put in me at that time. But one day, I got hooked in to ministry. I got hooked in to going out and loving people. I got hooked in to teaching Bible studies. I got he- hooked in to going out and working with inner city kids. And my, and my life changed. And when my life changed, my business changed. Because my business was part of my life. And it wasn't until I had a life change that my business could change because it was only part of who I was. It it changed as much of the word as I did. Amen. That's good. (laughs) It did, which means I was doing very little of the word. 
Because I was. I was doing very little of the Word. But as my life changed, as my focus began to change to the love of God and to, uh, to in me and towards others, then His love towards me began to change. Because I gave Him ability in areas I had not given Him ability before. And I began to do some of these things that Jesus preached and quit being the Pharisee. Because you know what? Any time you say, I tithe and my finances aren't doing good, then <laughs> you're contradicting the Word of God. Right? I give and give and give and I don't know what else I can do. Well, at least you let everybody know you give and give and give. So now we're all pleased with that. And at least you let them know you're a tither. So, because if that's why you did it, there's your reward. Right? And, and I've been there. I have been there. You know, and you guys, many of you may have, probably not. You're way, way smarter than me. But, man, I remember when I was believing for prosperity. And, and I said, God... I've given, I gave you my last $75 out of my bank account. I need, I need. Why aren't you helping me? It says in the Bible I'm supposed to prosper. And you know God say that whole time? Yep. <laughs> yes, you did, and yes, you are. But he, has, he still didn't have that ability in my life. At least everybody knew that I was giving and tithing, though, right? And I don't want you to think it's me. It's not me who's the problem. I'm giving and tithing. (laughs) So was God the problem? No. Dave was still the problem. Dave needed a life change. Dave needed a heart change. He needed a heart that God could prosper. I did not have a heart that God could prosper. When he can prosper your heart, then he'll, then, he'll, then he'll prosper your wallet. Amen? It's not about what you do. It's about how you do it. The Word of God will try your motives. Look at Hebrews 4.12. You can say all day long that I'm doing just what the Word of God says and it ain't working, but you're not right. <laughs> you're not right. I'm sorry. This verse proves it. It tries everything you do. It says the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. So it doesn't matter what two-edged sword you got. This one's sharper. Okay? (laughs) Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder. What's asunder? Dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. It'll tell you what's flesh and what's God. Yeah. Or it'll just tell what's flesh and what's God. You've got to listen to hear. Right? Now, you guys have all done stuff like that, right? Done stuff in your flesh. How many have read your chapter in the flesh? Come on. Yeah. I did it just this was a couple month ago or so, and I, I was in a hurry to get somewhere. But, man, you know, you've got to read your chapter, right? You know, because Brother Moore may ask, and then you've got to raise your hand or not. You know? And this is Dave sitting on the front row. What if he can't read his... Well, he's got to raise his hand. You know, and I'm like, you know, I'm reading, and you know, I'm doing my speed read trick, and I get through with it, and God's like, well, I hope you enjoyed that, because it had no value whatsoever. It didn't help you, and it didn't help me. Why? Because I had no heart. And, and his word immediately judged the thought and intent of my heart. The only intent of my heart was that I did it. Now I can say I did it. That's what the Pharisees were doing. Every day of their life, they wanted to be able to say, I did it. Right? And the word was judging them every day. Because their did it had no value. We don't want to do things so we can say we did it. We, can, we want to do things so we can say we are it. It is who we've become. It is my life. Right? When Jesus became our life, 
then we began to do things the way Jesus did them. And Jesus taught in these chapters, in chapter 5, and chapter 6, and chapter 7, how to live a life where your house is built on a rock. Where your life is built on that rock. Where no matter what comes against you, and be guaranteed the storms are coming. He said, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. Everybody's been to Bible school. Come on. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the sand went flat. But Jesus was teaching how to build your house on the rock. He was teaching how to not fail. God doesn't teach how to, how to fail. He teaches how to succeed. And he brought Jesus down here to show us how to succeed. And Jesus started in the book of Matthew... Well, or probably in, in all the four Gospels. This was his message. This was the message of the kingdom of God. And he said, if you'll listen to my sayings, if you'll hear my sayings and do my sayings. But to do his sayings, you have to do them with your heart. You can do nothing for God with your head. Your flesh will not please him. But your heart will. And so Jesus, <laughs> Right? You can tithe all day, right? Well, let's look. Uh, look at Matthew, uh, Matthew 23. The Pharisees tithed, didn't they? And they wanted you to know it, by golly. <laughs> lots of people do lots of things. But where's their heart? Right? Where's their heart? In Matthew 23, verse 23 and 24, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes of all your mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done and not left the other undone. In other words, you should tithe, but you should tithe and you should be concerned about judgment and mercy and faith. Judgment and mercy. We talked about this. Uh, not judging people. Judgment. You should be concerned about people being judged. Right? Mercy's right after it, right? Right? We talk, you don't want judgment without mercy. Nobody wants those two to be apart. Right? We don't want judgment over here and mercy over here. Right? <laughs> right? If you ever get to a situation where they say, go here for judgment or here for mercy, run right. Okay? Do not run to judgment. Mercy rejoices over judgment. Mercy is the love of God. What's he saying? You've omitted the, the people being judged, the mercy of God, and faith in God. You've omitted the things of love. All because you want enough people to know you tithed. Your tithing has no value because you've omitted the, the important things. And, he, and then he says, you blind guides. You strain at a gnat and you swallow a camel. <laughs> anybody ever? I said this in the first service. Anybody ever? Somebody needed a pill and you gave them this little bitty pill and they said, oh, I can't swallow that. And they're sitting there eating a sandwich. <laughs> you can swallow that bite of sandwich, but you can't swallow this little pill? That's in your head, man. And that's what they were doing. They were saying, oh, I, I can't believe that. And yet they're swallowing a camel. They're, they're saying, oh, I would eat that and that. And you're swallowing a camel. I mean, Jesus, he, he had it going on. He gave you some analogies, didn't he? He's saying your, your works have no value because you're doing them to be seen. Now, whether you're doing them to be seen or doing them to be righteous, neither one work. Right? He even said earlier in the book, in the same book of Matthew, in uh, Matthew 5, 20, he said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, in other words, if you, unless you start doing things the way I've just told you, instead of to be seen or to be heard or to be big or to be whatever then you're not going to see the kingdom of God either. Right? right. <laughs> so what do you mean? I'm going to go to hell? No, he's, <laughs> he's saying unless you see it the way I see it, it'll be very difficult to be saved. 
Why? Because you've got to receive the gift. You can't work for it. <laughs> how, how many know if you believe in works and if you can get your righteousness by works instead of by faith in Jesus Christ, then you're not going to get saved. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. Works isn't going to cut it. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, he's saying, you know what? You can't believe in their righteousness and get to heaven. Not only that, you can't believe in, their, in this form of righteousness and understand the things of God. Because the things of God are freely given. People that got a works mentality can't receive because they're always trying to buy. They're always trying to trade what they did to get what they want. <laughs> right? We're not doing that, are we? We're not even going to get caught up in that because that's a religious trap. And it's way too easy. You know, you see people say, wow, I wonder what they did for all that bad stuff to happen to them. You don't got to do nothing for bad stuff to happen to you. <laughs> do you realize that? You can walk through this world and do nothing wrong and bad stuff could happen to you. And, and we got Christians well-meaning people that are supposed to love us. And they say, man, look at their life. It's a mess. They must be really messed up people. Sin, sin, sin. Sin in the camp. Oh, my goodness. Please stay away from them. I'm sure glad Jesus didn't stay away from sinners. Or people that were messed up. <laughs> Why are we supposing because they haven't sinned that all this good stuff's going to happen to them? Good stuff happened because Jesus came. And you believing in it is how good stuff comes to you because it changes your life. And if it doesn't change your life, good stuff's not coming. Not from God anyway. And if it ain't from God, it ain't good. I don't care how pretty it's dressed. It's just like that pig we talked about. You can dress it up all day long. Still underneath all them clothes, it's a pig. Right? This is what Jesus said. If you'll change your life, if you'll change the way you think, if you'll change your doctrine. He was talking to people that had to change their doctrine because all they'd heard is we serve a vengeful God, a wrathful God. And you've got to do this and this and this and do it in just this order. Or else you ain't making it. And then they had the Pharisees helping them, telling them how they ought to be doing it. Wrong. Right? They had lots of help to be messed up. And Jesus said, let me clear some stuff up for you. Let me preach you a message on the goodness of God. And he came down and he began to show that God was good. What did Jesus preach? He preached the kingdom of God. And he preached his goodness. He preached the gospel, the good news. That God loves you. And that he loved you so much that he's giving for you. Amen. And that's what Jesus preached. You know, and you got these people that he talks about. We talked about them Friday night. And they said, they said Lord, 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 Lord. Didn't we prophesy? Didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we heal, heal the sick in your name? And Jesus said, who are you? Why? They didn't do. That, that's in this, these chapters. It's, in, it's, the, it's in, these, in this sermon. And Jesus said, I don't know you. Why? Because that's not what he asked him to do. He asked him to be poor in spirit. He asked him to be meek. He asked him to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He asked him to believe that God's gooder than anyone else in, ever. Amen. He asked him to believe that you can ask and receive. Knock and it shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. He told them not to worry about their own life. What, is he nuts? You've got to worry about your life. You just don't care? You're just too stupid to worry, aren't you? Well, I hope so. I hope I'm going to get stupider then. Maybe I can be so stupid I'll never worry.
Jesus taught the kingdom of God. Then he healed the sick. Then he delivered the blind. Then he taught the love because it's the love that changed the life. Right? Do you just want a person that's blind to see or do you want a person that's blind to see the love of God? Because seeing won't change your life. Seeing the love of God will. Amen. Amen? Amen? Because then you'll go out and make a difference in the world. Jesus wanted to change people's lives. Amen? And he did. And he did. Amen? Let's look at another one of the Pharisees. Jesus in chapter in uh, Luke. I just messed up. Luke eleven forty six. This is what the law will do and what legalism will do. And this is what the Pharisees were trying to do to the people. Jesus replied, Woe to you experts in the law. Woe unto you lawyers. There you go. I like that better. Experts in the law. Woe to you. Because you load people down with burdens they can't hardly carry, and you yourselves will not lift one finger to help them. So not only was he upset with them because they're putting stuff on people that they shouldn't have, but they're not even going to help them. In other words, I'm going to give you this and tell you you're going to have it the rest of your life and give you no hope. That's what he's saying. He's saying your works are only hurting people and you're doing nothing to help them. Right? We don't want to do works. I don't want to, I don't want to have to to do an eight-point system to prosperity or a 12-point system to healing or a 16-point system to peace. I, I don't want my point system. I want the grace system. Yeah, right. I'm looking for the grace and mercy system that says I'll give you the grace to be forgiven and the mercy not to have to pay the price and I'll give you the grace and the ability not to do it again. Not the grace that you can get out of the trouble again if you get in it. The grace that you don't have to do it anymore. I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God. I want to walk in the grace of God. I want to walk in the love of God. I want to do, do what Jesus preached. You guys want to do what Jesus preached? Let's see what Jesus preached. Look at, look at um, Matthew 5. Let's just look at Matthew 5. What did Jesus preach? Jesus preached the kingdom of God. Jesus preached empowered to prosper. But he never talked about anyone's wallet till later. All right? Because you can't truly prosper in your natural life until you can prosper in your spiritual life. You don't have the ability. Remember, I didn't have the ability to have what God had for me because I wasn't who he, was, who he wanted me to be. I wasn't doing what he said, right? People say, well, I was, were you making your confessions? <laughs> Doggone right, I was making them every day. You, you have yourself a bankrupt business, you'll do them, and you can do them in double time too. <laughs> my God beats all my needs according to his riches and glory. My God beats all my needs according to his glory. He wishes above all things that I prosper and be blah, 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 blah. Man, I was praying in tongues. But I had no value in the kingdom of God because all I was worried about was Dave and his prosperity. Because God wants Dave to prosper. And that's right. God did want Dave to prosper. And he knew exactly what it would take. He wrote it down in this book. Jesus said in verse 3, He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed is the poor in spirit. Everybody says, Poor and the poor in spirit. I like the way the I like that because it's not somebody up here, somebody that's on your level. <laughs> not the prideful, not not the Christian that knows more word than you. You know what? It don't matter how much word you know; it's how much word they can receive. Brother Morse said it a thousand times. You can go to the hospital and tell the sick that. God wants them well, and quote them 85 scriptures on why God wants them well. And it doesn't matter how many scriptures you got, it's what they can receive. Right? right? <laughs> you ever fed a baby? You get that spoon and you put it in their mouth and they go, it goes over here. 
<laughs> and you get half of it in their mouth, and the other half, you wipe it off their face, and you wait till their mouth opens again. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to feed the baby. Right? Sometimes it takes a little time. I tell you, you, get, you can even get frustrated. Can you just hold still? You wish you had one of those things that just held their face straight. Because, <laughs> man, they're everywhere. They're like, you're like, and, and by the time you're done, they got, they got it up here and over here and over here, and you're scraping it off with the spoon, and you're sticking it back in their mouth. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to feed the baby. It's not what they can, not what you got, it's what they can receive. They couldn't get it all in one bite. You needed to scrape it off their face and hand it to them again. (laughs) Sometimes you're so high up here that they don't even want to see you. Oh, he's, he's too far above me. Why do they think that? Why do they think that? We had to help them. Christians have had to help people think that. We're not above people. The only difference between us and someone that's not saved is we just know who Jesus is now. He's the same Jesus to them that He is to us, and He loves them just as much. Amen? Blessed, empowered to succeed are the poor in spirit, those who will come down to the level that Jesus came down to. He came down and became a man. And became like you and me. And showed us how to defeat the enemy. Amen? And sometimes we need to go to people and say, Oh, I have been where you are. I have been where you are. And I messed it up. But I can get you out of it. By the power and grace of God, I can show you how to miss this. Glory to God. Blessed, empowered to succeed are the poor in spirit. Why? Because people can hear them. They love people. They're they're able to lower themselves to people level. Right? Instead of raise themselves to God level. That's a humble person. That's a person that realizes what the love of God meant to them. Amen? What the work of God did for them. Blessed are those who mourn, for they'll be comforted. That's a good... Right? Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. We talked about this in the first service. Who was the meekest man in all the earth? Moses. When did it talk about Moses being the meekest man in all the earth? Right after Aaron and Miriam talked bad about him. Right after they got reprimanded for talking bad about him, and she had gotten leprous. And Moses turned around and said, well, I guess you got what you deserve. Because that's meek, right? Guess you won't be talking about Moses no more. Uh Uh-huh. Guess you forgot who I was. Moses. At the Red Sea, water in the rock. Moses. Want some props. That is not meek. You know what meek is? No, Lord, heal her. Love. Love. The meekness and the gentleness and the kindness of God in Moses called unto the gentleness and the kindness and the love of God in God and said, heal her. I don't want bad. I don't care what she said about me. That's the meekest man in all the world. And God said, they'll inherit the earth. Why? People will run to somebody like that. I know I've talked bad about you, Brother Dave, but I need help. Okay. I know, I know I shouldn't have said that, Cassie, but can you help me? Yeah. That's a meek person. That's somebody who doesn't care about themselves. They care about others. And, they, and they, are, they are going to be a complete conduit for the love of God. Amen? They'll inherit the earth. They'll inherit the earth. Those are the people that will have people around them all the time that are messed up. 
Say, I don't want a bunch of messed up people. If they'll come around you, they won't be messed up. What happened to Miriam after, God, after he said, no, heal her, Lord? Took her hand back out. She was as good as, good as gold. Amen. Why? Because you can't call on the love of God without getting the mercy of God. Amen. Impossibility. She got the mercy of God. The meek will inherit the earth. This is Jesus. He's saying, this is how you build your house on the rock. So let me show you how to build your house on the rock. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. This is how you build your house on the rock. Blessed are you if you are hungry for the things of God, the truth. Amen? Not, not, just, not, not, just, not just seeing it, being it. People that hunger after the things of God, chase them down. Amen. They're unwilling to be average. They're unwilling to only see enough for them. They want what their portion is and enough to give to others. Huh? You ever seen those kids? They run in and they see this stuff and it's free and they grab one and they say, Oh, but my brother's outside. Can I grab him one too? Sure they do. That's the love. That's what love does. It grabs enough for you and others. It's not just looking to satisfy itself. It's looking to satisfy all. Hungers and thirsts after righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. That doesn't even need any explanation. That's God-likeness right there. The the, The number one characteristic of God is mercy and love. It is who He is. It's not what, it's what He is. It's not just who He is. It is His, it is His very being. And mercy flows from Him. Amen. You can't go far enough to get outside His mercy. You can't, you can't do something. He says, I don't want you back. I wash my hands of you. You will never see a day where God sends somebody away. Ever. Blessed are the merciful, so they shall receive mercy. What's he doing? He's teaching us how to prosper. He's teaching us how to build our house on the rock. This is the rock. This is, you know, he's not just saying, do this because I like it. He's saying, do this. It's good for you, and you'll be good for others. In other words, if you'll catch this, you'll be so contagious, others will catch it when they get around you. If I can just get you all infected with it, if you will, that's not a good word. I don't like it. If I can just get you completely engulfed in this, you will get it all over everyone you're around. Amen? He, he's not, God doesn't ever just give us something for us. He doesn't. Everything He gives you, He gave you for you and others. He saved you for you and others. You're the next born of many brethren. Right? Jesus was the first born of many brethren. And you are the next born of many brethren. And because Jesus was born again, you could be born again. And because you could be born again, anyone could be born again. Because your job is to preach the same gospel that Jesus preached. Amen? Blessed. Are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. What, what, what's he saying? Your motives, pure in heart. He's not saying that your heart's completely clean, that you've never done anything wrong. It is now because of the blood of Jesus. But he's saying your motives are right. Blessed are the people that want to do it because they love the Lord. That They understand him. It says they will see God. What are they, what's he saying? He's saying he, they will be able to see why I do things. Why? Because their heart's pure. They don't have anything hindering them from seeing right. Right? When your heart's pure, God can show you things you couldn't see before. Because if your motives are to get something or your motives are to be something, that's not what he's... Your motive has to be to love. Your motive has to be to show people God. Your motive has to be right. And that's what he's saying. Blessed are the pure in heart. They will see God. Right? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called the sons of God. Why? Because that's what God does. Amen? 
and it's empowering. Well, why would we want a bunch of peacemakers on the earth so we can have peace? Oh, my goodness. You mean you just think everywhere you go, peace can happen? Yes. I think I can go in the most awful situations in the world and bring peace to it. I'm not talking about a lack of war. I'm talking about peace in the middle of a war. Right? Yeah, I believe I can. I believe, I believe we can. Amen? You believe we can? We're peacemakers. This is, this is talking about us. This ain't, you know, if everybody goes, yeah, you guys ought to be making peace. If you're in this building and you're listening to this, you're the person he's talking to, not the person he's talking about. So if you're sitting there being a victim, stop. Because you're already the victor. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's saying, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Amen? Blessed are people who are, those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. People aren't going to like everything, that good, all the good stuff happening to you, right? Blessed are those who, who insult. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you. Rejoice and be glad. Why? What's he saying? He's saying, go out and try to make people say bad things? No, he's saying, when you, when you got the goodness of God happening in your life, everybody ain't going to be happy about it. That's right. And when they talk bad about you, don't get offended. Don't ever get offended with them. Don't get mad at them. And never hold unforgiveness towards them. Forgive them immediately. Then he goes on and he talks about who we are. Why? Because we're blessed. If you're this, now you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. Why? Because now you have the ability to preserve and show the way. Why? Because you're blessed. You're meek. You're, you're a peacemaker. You're merciful. These are the people that want, he wants leading the way. He doesn't want the ones that are mean and hard and know more than everybody leading the way. He wants people who love. He wants people who, who refuse not to love. He's saying, you're not, you are the salt. You, you preserve. You are the light. You show the way. That's why he says, put your light on a hill. And then he says, he said, let people see your light. He said, well, here, well, let's just go to it. He says in verse uh, 16, in the same way, let your light shine. Let your light shine before men so that they'll know you have a light. Is that what it says? Let your light shine before, so they'll know you got a light? Nope. No, your light is not your deeds either. Remember, because it's going to talk about your deeds after that. Your light is the goodness of God in you. It's blessed is the meek. It's blessed is the, is the poor in spirit. That's your light. When you become that, you become a light. And when you're the light, he says, let people see it. Let, let your meekness be known. Let, let your peace be known. Let your mercy be known. Why? Because it glorifies your Father in heaven. He's saying, be that light so that the glory goes to me. Not so you get into heaven. Not so you can say, look what I did. I went there and peace happened. That's because I'm a peacemaker. I hunger so much after, after righteousness that... I have more than everyone else. You have none, if that's what you think. Right? We're the light of the world. We are, by our good deeds, done in the blessing of God to lead people to the goodness of God. Right? So that they can be the blessed of the Lord. So that they can inherit the kingdoms, so that they can be pure in heart, so that they can be peacemakers. We're creating them, recreating them, if you will. Amen? It was a good lesson that Jesus teach, taught. Teached? Teached? Okay, we're going with it. We're going with it. What else did he teach in that lesson? We can't go through the whole thing. Let's hit some of the high points. You're the light of the world. If you bring your gift to the altar and, th- and remember that your brother has ought against you, what do you do? Yeah, leave your... Why? Your gift doesn't have its full value. Not only do you need to forgive your brother or your brother needs to forgive you, your gift... God wants your gift to be valuable. And He's saying if there's anything in the way of me helping you, 
and you helping others fix it before you give it. Why? Because true giving is done with a pure heart. Amen? Amen? Pure giving is done out of love. Pure giving expects results, but never demands it. <laughs> okay? Jesus was the purest gift ever. And God expected results beyond results. He demands no one to be saved, but expects everyone to. That's a pure gift. That's a pure gift. Glory to God. <laughs> I like Jesus preaching. He's a good preacher. Jesus said, Jesus talks about adultery. And he said, I tell you, if you even looked at a woman wrong with lust. And what, what's he saying? He's saying, hey, guys, 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 guys. Sin doesn't start in the bedroom. It started somewhere way long ago. He's helping people. He's not telling them they're sinners or not. He doesn't say, don't commit adultery. He says, if your eye is causing you problems, you'd be better off not to have it. Right? What, what is he saying? He's saying sin ain't starting at the point of sin. It started at the point of lust. What's he really saying? I don't want you hurt. I don't want other people hurt. If you can see this, you can fix it before it ever starts. Amen? Because how many knows he'll forgive any of these things? He'll forgive them all. We serve a good God. Right? What else did he preach? Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't have to promise people a thousand things. If you say yes, make it yes. Why? Because that's, that's how you'll be most effective. He's, saying, he's teaching us how to build our house on a rock. He's teaching us how to not fail. He's saying, if you, if you do the, at the end of this sermon, he says, if you'll do these things, then it doesn't matter what storm comes, you're standing. Amen? He said, you've heard an eye for an eye for a tooth for a tooth. He's saying, no, I don't say that. <laughs> well, what's he say? He says, hey, if somebody demands your coat, give it to them. If somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek. What's he saying? You're not like them. You're not like them. Don't play their games. Don't get involved in their games. You're not like them. Amen. Don't be like them. And then he goes a step further. He says, he says uh, and it's said to you, uh, love, love the people around you and hate your enemies. And Jesus said, uh-uh. He said, I tell you to love your enemies. Pray for people who despitefully use you. Why? Because he loved them. What's he saying? I'm going to empower you. I'm going to empower you to be the love of God in the earth. And to be that, you have to do this. And you have to do it from your heart. Amen? He's saying love. Love never fails. In other words, I said this in the first service. How many have ever been in a fight? How many have lost? Then fighting can fail. Right? I don't care how tough you are. Somebody's tougher. You're going to find somebody that can beat you up. Guess what? Love ain't never been beat. Love has never failed, ever. And it never will. I'm going to count on something that can't be beat up. That cannot fail. And then he says, and then he says, and this is how you don't want to be. <laughs> He said, don't do your acts of righteousness like the Pharisees to be seen by men, like the hypocrites. See, now, now he's back to telling you, he said, your heart is what I'm looking for. I want your heart. I want you to do it for me because you love me and because you know you can help others if you do it. I want your heart. Don't do your acts of righteousness to poor men. When you give to the needy, you don't need to announce it. Amen. I'm giving to them because they're poor and broke. And I have been so richly blessed by God because of all the good things that I do that I am able to take care of these poor, helpless people. No, that's not love. And your gift has no value. 
You know what is love? I was talking to some people just recently who uh, house people that are on that are had bad things happen to them and and their kids, families, and uh, they said, you know, when the bus comes to pick these kids up at this place, it's, it's a huge facility, so there's several kids. They are the first ones on the bus, and they are the last ones off. So nobody knows where they got on, and nobody knows where they got off. That's a gift done in secret. You think the Lord doesn't see that? They're protecting those kids. They're loving those kids. Because how many know kids are mean sometimes? And, and, and they, they'll say bad things before they even know what they said. Adults are mean. That's the love of God in action. That's somebody saying, I care about how that person feels. People say, well, we don't want to care about their feelings. What about their faith? Get down. Come back. Poor in spirit. Get off your big old horse and get back down here on the earth and remember when somebody hurts your feelings. Okay? Jesus died for those people and me and you, just all of us. Amen? And sometimes people's feelings get hurt. And yeah, they do need to get in some faith, but telling them they need to ain't going to help their feelings or their faith. Generally, they're going to run away from you. But if, if this happens, if people are repelled by you, be guaranteed you're not in love. <laughs> love doesn't repel people. The only person that repels is the devil. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> love will always find a way to help. It will try. To, if people don't run to you, then look at your life. We want people to run to us. We don't want people to run away from us. Right? And again, if you're in here saying, yeah, you people shouldn't make me feel that way. No, you're in here. You're who being preached to, not being preached about. You're not the victim. You're the victor. When you walk out of here, I don't care if your life is the worst it's ever been. If you're on your last penny, if you ain't eight in three weeks, go out and help somebody. Be the pure in heart. Be the meek. Well, I can't do that without you. can do everything without money. you got the love of God in you. You can do any and all things. Amen. And if you'll begin to do them out of that love, then your worst time won't be there anymore. Hmm. And he says, when you pray, don't pray like the hypocrites. Don't pray to be seen or tell people how big your words are or how much you know. You ever, you ever been asked to pray? And you know it's, you weren't asked to pray immediately, so you get time to think about it. So you're thinking about all the scriptures you want to pray and exactly how you want to say it. None of you guys have done that, so I have. So don't do this, okay? Because it has no value. Because you're just wanting people to know how spiritual you are, not how much you want them well, not how much you want them helped. Right? Don't, don't pray like the hypocrites who, who babble. That's, that's what he calls it, babbling. Why? Because that's what it means. That's its value. You'd be better off to pray, Lord, I don't know what can happen here, but help them. Give them mercy. Amen? Why? Because he do, he's not doing this to talk against the people praying wrong. He's trying to help these people. And he's trying to help other people through these people. And if he can teach them how to pray, he can not only help them, he can help many others through them. See, God's not, he sees so much more than we see. You know, we see, yeah, we don't want to pray like those hypocrites. No, we want to pray like Jesus said. That's even better than not wanting to pray like the hypocrites. Right? He wants our prayer to have value. And he says, forgive if you have ought against any. Why? Nothing you do has value if you don't. Forgiveness is the ultimate act of love. Right? He forgave you so that he could have you back. Amen? And if you can't forgive, then you don't know love. (laughs) Somebody didn't like that. Wow. No, really. Uh, It's very serious. If you cannot forgive, you do not understand love. And if you want true understanding of the love and freedom, forgive. Choose to forgive. Amen? And you'll have a freedom like you've never had before. 
and you'll open up doors to God that you thought you'd never see. Hmm. And when you fast, <laughs> I have to read this one anytime somebody asks me to fast. Fast? That's how I look when people say fast. Don't eat? <laughs> I'm going to fast green beans for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm going to fast celery every day. Just don't make me fast Little Debbie's or cheeseburgers. <laughs> when you fast, don't, we don't need, we're not doing it to be seen. What is he saying? I want your heart. Your heart doesn't do it to be seen. Your heart does it to make a difference. It doesn't care if anyone ever knows as long as it, as long as it did what it was intended to do. It's not about who knows. It's about what it did. Glory Amen? That's what he's saying. He's not telling you not to be like the hypocrites. He's telling you to be like him. Yes. Amen? To be like love. Don't store up for yourself treasures on this earth. What's he saying? Is he saying, oh, I don't want you to have any money? No. He's saying don't put your hope in that money. Right. That's not where your hope is because I want your heart. What's he saying? Your heart's where your treasure is. I want your heart. Don't put your heart in your money. Put your heart in me. Why is he saying that? Because he needs your heart? No, he loves you. He knows that if he has your heart, he has you and he has many others because of you. Amen? He's not saying don't have money. He's saying don't put your hope in your money. Put your hope in me. Right? You believe that? This is Jesus preaching. This is, this is what we ought to have on CD. If you've got Bible on CD and you want to listen to a good message today, listen to Matthew 5 through 7. You'll hear Jesus preach. Amen? Then he said, no one can serve two masters. What's he saying? Keep your heart with me. Don't serve money. Don't serve your job. Don't serve your family. Don't ser- serve me. And all this other stuff you'll have. Amen? He says, don't worry. Don't worry about your own life. This is Jesus' message. What's he doing? He's teaching you how to build your house on the rock. Sure foundation. A sure foundation. Amen? This is a sure foundation. Don't worry about your life. What you're going to eat. What you're going to drink. What's he saying? Trust in my love. Is he saying don't go out and get a job? No. <laughs> no. No, that would contradict his own word. He's saying don't make your job your hope. He's saying I'm your hope. I'm your God. I know what you have need of. Don't worry about these things. What's he saying? Cast your care on me. He said, why, why is he telling you? It's because he's going to tell you what he wants you to do. Because he's saying if you're doing this, you can't do this. But he doesn't say it that way. He says, don't do this, do this. And what did he tell us to do? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Don't do this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his way of doing and being right. And all these things will be added unto you. Glory to God. Then he told them not to judge, right? Told them how to help their brother, take the speck out of your eye, take the log out of your own eye. Why? Because he wants you to be able to help your brother, right? Isn't that what he said? He said, why are you trying to help him with with a beam in your own eye? He said, first, take the beam out of your eye, then you will be able to help. That's his motive. He's saying, fix you so you can help them. It's his motive. And that's what he wants your motive to be. Be blessed so I can help them. Be meek so I can help them. Be this so I can do that. That's God. That's the message of Jesus Christ. (laughs) I like it. How many want to do this? How many know we have everything inside of us to do this? Glory to God. And then he starts talking about how good God is again because he's getting ready to end his message. All right, he is. He says, he says, ask and it'll be given unto you. Knock, the door will be open. Seek and you shall find. Right? 
Why? Because he's been talking to all these people and all the time. He said, if you're doing this, just continue down the line. These are the things that can happen in your life. Why? Because if you're doing what's happening, what he talked about in chapter 5, you'll, you'll be able to do this with the right heart. People that are doing, pe- meek people, <laughs> ask for the right things. See what I'm saying? He's talking to people that he believes in. Amen? Ask, and it will be given unto you. Then he says, how many of your dads, if you ask them for bread, will give you a stone? Or a fish, will give you a snake? He said, they're nothing like, my, like your, your father in heaven. They're nothing like him. As good as they can get, he is so much gooder. Amen. He is the gooder us, the gooder us, us, us. And you can't get gooder than God. And as good as God gets, he'll get gooder if you'll let him. Amen? And he's trying to get this to us so that the goodness is in us, so that we are gooder. Amen? And that the things we do are out of his goodness and out of his love and out of his kindness and out of his mercy. Not a need to be seen, not a need to be respected, not not recognize my gift, not, not recognize who I am. Do it like this. And then he ended it and he said, there's only one way to do this and it's a very narrow way. Right? But he said, enter that way because there's a whole bunch of people trying to do it by works. There's a whole bunch of people trying to do it other ways. There's a whole bunch of people that are going to go off trying one way or another. But this is the way. And it leads to life. Not just yours. Everyone that you encounter. He wasn't just leading to your life. Put it up, Matthew seven thirteen. Enter through the straight gate, for the wide for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many try to enter in that way. Fourteen. Because the straight gate straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few find it. What's he saying? Do it the way I just told you. Go back to chapter five. He didn't have chapters then. He said, go back to blessed, the first word I spoke in this message, and begin to live this message, begin to breathe this message, begin to be this message, and you will be on the path that leads to life. Not just life for you, life for everyone you encounter, life for those around you. Why? Because now you're a meek. Now you're a peacemaker. Now you're not worrying about your own life. You're only doing things for God. Your motives become pure, and you built your house on the sure foundation, the rock of Jesus Christ. And because you've done that, you're now, you now have a God-given ability in you to, to be the answer in every situation that he puts you in. Sure foundation. Sure foundation. Back to our verses. 7.24. Therefore, this is what he's saying to us today now. We've just heard Jesus' message. We've just heard the message that he preached. And now he'd say, whoever hears my sayings and does them, you'll be likened unto a wise man. How many wise men do I got in here? How many are going to build their house on this rock? How many are going to quit seeking after the things of God and seek God? Because that's where the things of God are found. Amen? Amen? You, you, want, you, want to, you want to find the things of God? Go to where God is. And don't, don't look for His hand. Seek His face. Amen. Glory to God. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Matt, you got a song? This little light of mine
God. Well, you may be an adult, and you may be a distinguished adult, but it's time to let that inner kid out. Amen? Because Jesus also said, He who receives me, how's He going to receive me? Like a little child. Guess what? Everybody sang this song in Bible school, right? You had your orange, your red Kool-Aid and your vanilla cookies. Amen? Let's not be ashamed. Let's shine our light. And when we sing it, do it. You can laugh at me while you do it. It'll make you happy if you'll do it. It makes me smile. This little light of mine. It was a good song in Bible school, and we know so much more about it today. Because God said, this little light of mine, it's the light of the world. And I have ability to lead people to the goodness of God and salvation in Jesus Christ. So this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Satan it out either, are we? Okay, sing it. helping us guys he's going to take us to levels we never thought we'd get in prosperity in faith this is the foundation you put your house on faith is in your house prosperity is in your house but if the storm comes and blows your house over faith and prosperity go with it but when we live the message of Jesus Christ when we live for him when we do what we do because of him then we become unstoppable unstoppable. It doesn't matter what storm rages. It doesn't matter what comes near us. We're going to stand. And we'll be there to be that light, to be that salt, to be the goodness of God in the land of the living. Rob, come close. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. You ready to let your light shine? world's out there. That's where the light needs to shine. Amen. Well, we don't want to leave without giving somebody an opportunity to know what that light is. We've been to Bible school, been to all of these places, but a lot of people didn't get that opportunity. They didn't get to know the Jesus we got to be taught about when we were little. The one that was so good in all that he did for us, we didn't get to see that. Some people didn't get to see that. And so this love of God that Dave's been talking about, the love of God that we get to see and feel and know, if you're here today and you're not familiar with that, don't leave that way. It can change right now. You can know the love of God in a way that you never even dreamed possible. So if you're here, if you would, everybody bow your heads for just a minute. 
If you're here and you're not sure what this love of God is, if you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt who Jesus is, and if you know he's not been your Savior before, would you just raise your hand for just a moment? Just raise your hand. Acknowledge. I see that hand. Acknowledge that that you're not sure yet. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Everybody that's saved has done this. Glory to God. So if you don't know that you know, or maybe you walked away from God. Maybe maybe you knew the love of God, but you kind of got lukewarm and, and cooled off a little bit, like Dave's glass of water Friday night. You can get that, that heat back. You can build a fire back under it. If that's you, raise your hand that you need to come back to God right now. Would you raise your hand? Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord. Well, would you open your eyes for just a minute? We're going to affirm or reaffirm. There was a hand or two raised, and we don't want to embarrass you. So we're going to affirm or reaffirm our faith right now. So pray this after me. Dear Lord, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. He paid the full price for all my sin. I believe you raised him from the dead. And he's alive right now. King of kings. Lord of lords. Jesus, I believe in you. And today... I confess you as my Savior. And as you help me, I will live my life for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Altar care workers, if you'd come forward. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, don't go out the back. The choir's going to sing as we're dismissed. But come down front. Talk to one of these guys. They want to rejoice with you and shout with you. If you've got a question about your salvation, come on forward. There's no time like today to know. And then your light can shine. Praise the Lord. So they're going to sing. We're going to be dismissed. Love you guys. Have a great week.